we're going to take a look at some of the free agent pass rushers in the 2024 offseason, and we're going to start it off with a guy that's definitely probably one of our favorites, um, somebody who the Bears have had uh, interest in even when trading the number one overall pick. It was, hey, we either want DJ Moore or we want Brian Burns. And Brian Burns, 25 years old, nine sacks, 50 tackles, two forced fumbles in 2021. In 2022, 12 and a half sacks, 63 tackles, one forced fumble. 2023, eight sacks, 50 tackles, one forced fumble. Spot track has him at five years, 108.7 million, 21.7 million a year. David, what do you think of Brian Burns? To me, there's a few slam dunk free agency moves as long as, because free agency is interesting and like, uh, in the way that obviously the player needs to be interested to come here too. If Brian Burns wants to be a Chicago Bear and that's the price, it's worth every penny. That will be one of Chicago's new favorite players, I think, for the next five years. If you give him five years at $22 million even, that's a comparable contract to Montez Sweat, and he's 25. Montez Sweat, I think, is what, 28, 27, right? So if you're willing to give that contract to Brian to Montez Sweat, that's a no-brainer slam dunk. If Brian Byrne wants to be here and you want to pay $22 million, sure, you're going to invest a lot of money at defensive end. There's no other position in the NFL that I would be more comfortable in, even if one of those guys gets hurt. You still have another guy on the other side that backs him up and can still p- apply pressure. If both players are, are healthy, you have one of the most terrifying pass rush and defensive lines in the NFL day one right away, ready to go. At 25 years old, like Brian Burns is one of my favorite players in the NFL in general. He plays the run well. He plays the pass well. He applies pressure. All the things line up. Um, man, I if Brian Burns doesn't end up a Chicago Bear, I'm going to be a little disappointed. I'm going to be upset. Like You should move heaven and earth. You should give him the best deal. You should be ready to pay him. And... It's a value position. There's very few positions in the NFL where five years at 20 something million dollars a year are almost guaranteed to not bite you in the ass. And even if Brian Burns gets hurt for one of those seasons, but can still produce at that kind of consistent level, like nine, 12, eight sacks on the other side of Montez Sweat, even if he got a terrible injury for like one year, that contract's still great. Like 22 million a year for four years of production at a defensive end. Sign me up. Let's go, ready to go. And now that frees you up so much in the draft to not look for a defensive end. Now you can really focus on like defensive tackle, uh, a good three tech, right? Like you can focus on the offensive side. You can focus on corner. I think it just frees up so much because that's such a valuable position also in the draft. We know this. uh, Good defensive ends pretty much come first or second round every time. That defensive end position can impact the game so much in so many ways. And that's why these guys do um, call in a ton of money and it's worth paying them as long as that position pans out. When we look at these defensive guys that are producing in the NFL and where they were drafted. Okay. Yeah. You know, you got Nick Bosa, first round pick two overall. Mike Parsons, first round pick 12 overall. Miles Garrett, first round pick one overall. Brian Burns was pick 16 overall. TJ Watt, first round pick 30 overall. Max Crosby's kind of an outlier here in the fourth round. Montez Sweat was even a first round pick. When you look at these guys that produce, they're high draft picks. They really are. Even when it comes to defensive tackles in this league, you see the same thing when it comes to drafting them. You know, Aaron Donald, first round pick 13. Chris Jones, second round pick 37. Dexter Lawrence, first round pick 17. Quinn and Williams, first round pick three. Cameron Hayward, first round pick 31. Forrest Buckner, first round pick 17. Jonathan Allen, first round pick 17. These guys get drafted high. And so there's, you know, no surprise that in the free agency market, they demand large contracts as well. Let's take a look at the next guy here. Leonard Williams, 29 years old. In 2021, he had six and a half sacks, 82 tackles, two forced fumbles. 2022, two and a half sacks, 45 tackles, one forced fumble. I think he may have had some injury concern that year, or I think he may have spent some time out due to an injury that year. In 2023, he had five and a half sacks, 62 tackles. His market value is three years, 50.1 million, 16.7 million a year. David, what do you think of Leonard Williams from the Seattle Seahawks? Uh, Leonard Williams is okay. Um, at that age and the fact that he, if I'm not mistaken, has traditionally played like a defensive end in a 3-4, which is pretty different from like a pass rushing 4-3 defensive end. Um, he would be 
a very disappointing like third or fourth choice of what I would see. I would rather have like Brian Burns and Neil Hunter, and then even a, maybe a possible just straight draft pick over Leonard Williams. But if you are just floundering in free agency, I, I don't know how many teams are going to be chomping at the bit for Leonard Williams, and I don't see a lot. But you never know. Uh, free agency gets crazy, and you never know who gets you know just kind of like a weird deal. Um, for the Bears, I'm not seeing a big fit, nor do I see a logical fit. Let's talk about the next guy here as a defensive end that's available in the 2024 free agency. We're looking at Jonathan Greenard off the Houston Texans, 26 years old. In 2021, he had eight sacks, 33 tackles, two forced fumbles. 2022, one and a half sacks, 16 tackles, one interception. I believe there was some injury that year. 2023, 12 and a half sacks, 52 tackles, one forced fumble. Spot track has him at four years, 53.8 million, 13.4 million a year. David, what do you think of Jonathan? Greenard. He's a I feel, he feels like a very Ryan Polsey move, right? Like a guy who would be signed for his upside uh, at an age that maybe was like, oh, I feel like a different team maybe could have used him better, or he's a little bit undervalued at thirteen million. I think with twelve and a half sacks and eight sacks in twenty twenty one, that's clearly like a upward projection. So for thirteen point four mil, I think that's a good value. He's similar stats minus twenty twenty two to like a guy like Brian Burns, right? Except for almost half the money. So if you strike out on Brian Burns, um, Jonathan Greenard is like a pretty good second option. And I, it's it's an option that I would take as an upside signing at a good value, right? Because preaching value all that time. And then that's a guy that you sign and you would feel confident in him starting most games, but you probably want him in some sort of defensive line rotation, right? Because you don't necessarily know if he's going to be able to pull off everything every snap. Um, stats are great and all that, but, um, on a down to down basis, I think, you know, if you have Montez sweat on the other side, Jonathan Greener might be a really great choice because what you just saw with like him and Will Anderson jr. This year, right. It might be that kind of situation where he really needed a, a, a first guy to kind of take the pressure off of him so that he can play really, really well on the other side with a little less, uh, spotlight on him and step up. So it's, it feels like a good upside signing at a good value. And Ryan Pol- it feels like a Ryan Poles thing. It feels like a Ryan Poles, I see something that other people might not, and I want to scoop this guy up before he becomes too expensive. Uh, say we do address that position in the draft with pick nine, for example, and we go off and get uh, you know, a high caliber defensive end or defensive tackler or something. We may just be looking for some rotational pieces and rotational guys. I think that's kind of what this next guy may be that we're going to look at. A.J. Epinesa, 25 years old, from the New York Giants. 2021, he had one and a half sacks, 14 tackles. 2022, six and a half sacks, 16 tackles, two forced fumbles. 2023, six and a half sacks, 20 tackles, one forced fumble, two interceptions. Spot track has him two years, 11.3 million, 5.6 million a year. David, what do you think about Epinesa? Um, I think he's okay. Uh, like you said, he's a good rotational guy if you strike out on uh, on really everybody. If I'm not mistaken, he's going to be much more of a 3-4 style, like defensive linebackers. Yeah, he he projects to be much more of like a, a starting outside linebacker, like a pass rush linebacker. So, yeah, it's okay. But I think we've seen this experiment rarely work where you ask a 3-4 linebacker to kind of put his hand in the dirt consistently and then stop the run. Overall, I think it's it's a risky play. But like you said, at $5, 6000000 million a year at 25 years old, I would love it as a rotation piece if you do address it in the draft and then you have him kind of backing that position up. It's it's a risky play, but it's a value play. Recently, we've heard that a guy like Daniil Hunter may be available from the Vikings. You know, Daniil Hunter, 29 years old, 2021, he had six sacks, 38 tackles, 2022, 10.5 sacks, 65 tackles, one forced fumble. And then last year, 16 and a half sacks, 83 tackles, four forced fumbles. Spot track has him looking at a three year, $60.1 million contract, 20 million a year. David, what do you think about Hunter? To hamstring the Vikings and to steal him would be pretty, pretty huge. Um, I think he's an amazing player. Another first rounder, right? We keep talking about these first rounders that are impact players. Um, Really productive. The only two concerns I would have with Daniil Hunter is uh, really the age, right? 29 tend to kind of get a little bit slower uh, at 29, but Montez Sweat is not a very dissimilar age. Uh, The only other concerns I would have is, 
he always plays – well, he hasn't always. He's a good rotation guy. He's he's one of the few examples of a 3-4 guy and a 4-3 guy that kind of goes back and forth and is able to switch back. The only thing is, like, we watched uh, Brian Flores' defense this year, and it was a heavy, heavy pressure, heavy blitzing kind of scheme. And if you look at the years before, it was a little bit more traditional, which I think is what the Bears run now. Matt Eberflus did kind of turn up the blitzes – halfway through the year, right? And it kind of got a little bit more interesting, but I don't think we're ever going to see Matt Eberflus run anything like Brian Flores does. We're just, you know, we're sending six or seven guys four plays in a row. And if, you know, Daniil Hunter's stats go up in his contract year with heavy, heavy pressure and a totally different defensive coordinator, I don't know if that translates to this defense as well. It's He's still great. It's still going to be a massive, massive upgrade. He's going to look Great on the other side of Montez Sweat. Uh, but those are the two, like, concerns. Obviously, he'd probably be my second choice on this whole list, right, next to Brian Burns. Another guy that's available is Zadarius Smith. Now, we've seen this guy. I believe he started off his career on the Ravens. We saw him play on the Packers. We saw him play on the Vikings. He's currently on the Browns. But he's about to hit free agency at the age of 31. 2020, 12 and a half sacks, 52 tackles, three force fumbles. 2022, 10 sacks, 44 tackles, one force fumble. And then last year, five and a half sacks, 27 tackles, and one force fumble. We're looking at a value of two years, 25 million, 12.4 million a year. David, what do you think about Zadarius Smith? He is right up there with AJ Epineza as like a potentially risky free agent choice, right? Um, definitely can play hand in the dirt. Definitely a, a three, four linebacker as well. So he's versatile. Um, this, the age is getting scary, right? And you can see it in the statistics. It kind of drops off dramatically. I think he's your, he's probably your number one or number two choice. If you've just decided to go young and in the draft, right? I think that's your perfect stop gap. One or two year deal, rotational guy, a one year deal. He'll definitely be here. The second year is, you know, something like he, they could cut him and save some money. If he just completely falls off a cliff. Or you ride him out and, you know, let him go until the age of 33 until the younger guy's ready to take over in a rotational piece. But um, I'd like him a little bit better than maybe a guy like A.J. Epineza with the options of, you know, having a stopgap at defensive end. Because you do need to clearly upgrade. It'd be a very situational choice. It'd be as a rotational down lineman with as a stopgap measure for, you know, the younger guy to come in and take over. Next guy we're going to look at is a name that all Bears fans know. Leonard Floyd, 31 years old already. Wow, how time flies, huh? In 2021, he had nine and a half sacks, 70 tackles, one forced fumble, one interception. 2022, nine sacks, 59 tackles. And last year, he had 10 and a half sacks, 32 tackles, one forced fumble. We're looking at a value of two years, 16.2 million, about 8 million a year. David, what do you think about bringing Leonard Floyd back to the Bears? I would like to. Um, for the same reasons we would bring in a guy like Zadarius Smith. I think Leonard Floyd really uh, learned the game and learned the nuances of the game and progressed as he left the Bears. And I don't think he has any motivation to come back here. I think he's getting older, and he proved that he is – I'm blown away at the price tag, really, um, for him to be that cheap and that productive consistently still. I feel like Leonard Floyd is going to probably – deserve a little bit more money and probably go to a better team that is a little bit more ready for a Super Bowl. Next guy we're going to look at is Josh Allen. No, not the quarterback Josh Allen, but the defensive and the pass rusher Josh Allen. Um, he has had seven and a half sacks, 71 tackles, one forced fumble, one interception in 2021, only 26 years old. In 2022, he had six sacks, 57 tackles, and four forced fumbles. 2023, he had 17 and a half sacks, 66 tackles, two forced fumbles, one interception. He's looking at a big contract. Five years, $120 million, about $24 million a year. David, what do you think about the pass rusher, Josh Allen? I think he knew he had a contract here coming up. Um, I don't ever assume that NFL players phone it in or don't try as hard, but it could be a combination of things. And really what you're looking at with Josh Allen and that stat line and his productivity, you're looking at either really two things. It all finally clicked right at the age of like 25, 26, which is totally possible because that's a lot of uh, defensive ends. They kind of start off slow and then things start to click and then they start being a little bit more consistent. Right. So that jump though is is insane. It's a massive jump. It's from seven and a half, six, and then seventeen and a half. You're adding ten sacks per like per season. 
that to me is if he continues to do that, we're talking about one of the best defensive ends in the league. And I don't know if he's in that conversation yet, but he does, he would deserve to be at that stat line. Um, I didn't really see Jacksonville getting that much better on defense this year either. So that's why I kind of lean towards, you know, he either just figured it out and how to play defensive end a little bit more nuanced and how to get more sacks specifically, or it was a bit of a bit of both. It would definitely be an expensive signing. So we're going to look at a guy that doesn't have much production here. Josh Uche. I I hope I'm pronouncing that right. 25 years old off the new England Patriots. 2021, he had three sacks, 12 tackles. 2022, he had 11 and a half sacks, 27 tackles and two forced fumbles. But last year, just three sacks, 15 tackles. We're looking at a guy that's worth two years, 16.7 million, 8.3 million a year. David, what do you think about Josh Uche? He's got, you know, that three, four pedigree. So I think it's a lot to ask of a 25 year old to kind of just completely change schemes, but it's not unheard of. And to me, this is one of those. Uh, similar to like an Andrew Billings signing, right? Like it's a necessary piece. He might play both positions well. He might play the run well and give you just enough off of off the edge. And at that contract, I think it's it'd be just a really, really great value signing for what we've been talking about as a complementary piece in a rotation depth chart with a young guy kind of learning behind him. He's still young himself too, right? So he has something to prove. He's hungry. He wants to produce. Um, he wouldn't want a rookie coming in and taking his job. And it might be a good, like, complimentary, you know, change of pace type player at a really good price tag. To me, I always, when I sent you a few names, to me, Josh Uche just stood out as a little bit of like a, a very value, value signing, very under the radar. You know, he's up and down, obviously, three sacks, 11 and a half, and three. So you're looking at the upside. Mm-hmm. 